In today's video, we're going to break down the differences between two absolutely incredible breeds, the Bull Mastiff and the Doberman. Welcome back to the Femrir Bull Mastiff Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to teaching you everything that you could ever want to know about the incredible Bull Mastiff, then how you can become a high-level canine leader that raises perfect Bull Mastiff companions. So if you love the Bull Mastiff as much as we do here at Fenrir, start your journey by hitting that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and you'll never miss a future Bull Mastiff video. And today we're going to look at the differences between two extremely intriguing guard dog breeds, the mighty Bull Mastiff from here in England, and then one of the most intelligent protection dog breeds in the world, the German Doberman. Now let's jump straight into the video and we'll start with the history of these awesome dogs, because we can't truly know what a dog's like now if we don't know what they were originally bred for. The majestic Bull Mastiff was created here in England in the 19th century. As its name indicates, the amazing dog is in fact a combination of two other breeds, the now extinct Old English Bulldog and the English Mastiff. The Bull Mastiff was developed by men in desperate need of a better guardian. The gamekeepers of Britain, who were tasked with preventing poachers from hunting illicit game. To assist them, they needed a large, powerful dog able to track down and apprehend the offenders until they themselves could arrest them. And whilst the prevalent guardians of the time, the Bulldog and the English Mastiff, were either too aggressive or too slow for what they needed, crossing those two produced the perfect dog for the job. Now, since since then, the Bull Mastiff has become one of the most sought-after guard dog breeds on the planet. And just like the Bull Mastiff, the Doberman has also been created as a guardian breed, but in this case, the specific aim was to develop the perfect personal protection dog. The breed's father, tax collector Carl Doberman, needed an effective and obedient guardian for himself, a dog who he could take along on his rounds, but no contemporary breed at the time really fit the bill. So he decided to create the dog he required himself. He crossed Rottweilers, German hunting terriers and pinchers with great Danes, English greyhounds and sheep herding dogs. His efforts were met with huge success. Mr Doberman produced an amazing breed, strong, intimidating and yet deeply loyal to its owner. Soon the Doberman gained recognition all over the world. So then let's break down some of those obvious differences in their looks. Well, Bull Mastiffs are obviously sturdy, large-boned and well-muscled dogs. Their massive blocky heads are framed by uncropped floppy ears. The loose skin on their faces forms deep folds. In colour, the short-coated Bull Mastiffs can be brindle, red or fawn. Adult males reach in heights of 69 centimetres, around 27 inches, and can weigh 60 kilos or 130 pounds, with the females of both of these breeds being slightly smaller and lighter than the males. Males. Now, contrary to the Bull Mastiff, the Doberman is an immensely elegant dog who much resembles its ancestors, the sleek and lightning fast English Greyhound. The Doberman's short, single layered coat is almost exclusively black and tan or chocolate and tan. Other colours can occur, but are classed as undesirable by breed standards. A male Doberman can reach 72 centimetres, which is around 28 inches, and weigh up to 40 45 kilos, around 100 pounds. The Doberman's head is that narrow and elongated with no marked stop and that long muzzle. Traditionally, Dobermans used to have cropped ears and docked tails, but this practice has become or is becoming illegal in many countries like here in the UK. Hey guys, very quickly, I just wanted to ask, are you following us over on Instagram? If you're not, there's two accounts that I would love for you to check out. The first one is our brand account, at Femrir Canine Leaders, where you can see more about our industry-leading products that we create. If you're interested in following me personally, that's at I am Will Atherton, where you can see behind the scenes of me working with some of the most extreme behavior cases in the world and what it takes to run these kind of YouTube channels. And maybe if you just want to be able to come over and chat with me, that's the place for you. So there'll be links down in the description box for both of our Instagram pages. I'd love for you to come and check them out and hopefully we'll chat over there. So then, intelligence and trainability. This is where some of the really important things start to come into account. Now, although Bull Mastiffs are blessed with a sweet and charming personality, when it comes to training them, we are confronted with amazingly high levels of stubbornness. And whilst they are intelligent, their tendency to think independently can easily lead the Bull Mastiff to 
completely ignoring commands. These lovable guardians definitely have a mind of their own, and this independence makes bull mastiffs not the ideal choice for novice owners. Now, this breed greatly benefits from the leadership of a calm, consistent owner who has the patience and experience needed to train such a strong and strong-willed dog. Now, Dobermans, on the other hand, are extremely cooperative. They are keen and alert. They are always more than happy to work, which makes them one of the easiest guardian breeds to train. They are highly intelligent. Dobermans, they absolutely, they live to work and absolutely love using their physical and mental prowess, which is why lots of mental stimulation should be provided for this active breed on top of lots of exercise. One possibility to keep them sharp mentally is working them in the fields of obedience, tracking, guarding or canine sports. But also regular walks in areas with lots of different smells, sights and sounds are excellent ways to provide both physical and mental stimulation for your Doberman. Now, in their temperament, these breeds are also very different. Whilst the Bull Mastiff is extremely laid back, calm and easygoing, the untiring Doberman is highly energetic, keen and alert when playing, working or walking. Both breeds are very affectionate towards their owners and surprisingly calm and gentle indoors. Measured in their movements, they are not likely to wildly run around the house, chasing kids and cats or knocking over your possessions. This is why both Bull Mastiffs and Dobermans even make good apartment dogs. Of course, they are both loyal, natural guardians who can and will protect you and your home. Whilst either breed gets along great with children, I personally think that the Bull Mastiff is one of, if not the best family guardian breed on the planet. These large protectors naturally adore and are astoundingly patient with their children. Both the Bull Mastiff and the Doberman are very people-oriented companions who should be allowed to live in the house with their family. Now, when it comes to their behaviour towards strangers, they are both somewhat wary and reserved, but shouldn't be outwardly aggressive or reactive, especially when well-trained and well-socialised. So then let's look at the exercise and grooming differences. Well, the beautiful short and shiny coats of the Bull Mastiff and the Doberman only need one br brush over a week, maybe two, which are best done with a soft bristle brush or a grooming mitt for dogs. Now, should they get dust on their fur, you can simply wipe them down with a damp washcloth and that's usually enough. In terms of bathing your Doberman or your Bull Mastiff, one bath a month is usually sufficient. As the Bull Mastiff has those deep facial wrinkles that can get infected, with them it is best to clean them daily with a canine wipe or a baby wipe just to stop any infection setting in. Now, in terms of exercise, the tireless Doberman needs a lot of it in the form of playtimes, run off leash, long walks and working them to really tire them out. You can do things like playing fetch with them, uh, you could invest in a flirt pole or teach them to run next to you or you're next to your bicycle. Now, Bull Mastiffs, on the other hand, are one of the most sedentary and low energy breeds around. Three to four short walks a day are enough to keep them happy, which is not to say that Bull Mastiffs do not enjoy play sessions with other dogs and with their owners, they just need far less of them than the untiring Doberman. So then, I hope you enjoyed that quick breakdown of these two incredible and wonderful guardian breeds that do fit very different purposes. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And remember, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. We've got two dedicated Bull Mastiff videos coming here to this channel every single week. And I cannot wait to speak to you again on the next episode of the Femre Bull Mastiff Show.